Brewer, you're kind of starting to make me mad early this morning. And the opposite then, how could you hire Ben Johnson who was handed a 17 point lead and couldn't stop scoring? Stop it. It was a team loss and we didn't make enough plays. And Anson, for those of you who don't know, Chuck, or you, you probably don't know, Chuck Brewer has been one of the harshest critics of Ben Johnson throughout the year. And I'm not saying that you don't like him or anything like that, but at the same time, and we went through it a couple days ago as well. I had some issues with Ben Johnson's third quarter play calling at times this year and even in the NFC Championship game. He's not perfect. Sometimes in the red zone, they got a little bit too cute. But when I really took some emotion out of it and broke it down, if Josh Reynolds catches that pass, they probably go to the Super Bowl. If Josh Reynolds catches that third and 10 after San Francisco 49ers had tied the game, they probably score on that drive. I'm not saying that they automatically go to the Super Bowl, but getting some points after the 49ers had tied it up would have been a big deal. And on the first play of the drive in between, Jameer Gibbs fumbled. I don't necessarily think those plays in general were Ben Johnson's fault. I'm not saying he was perfect. I'm just saying, like, Chuck Brewer, do you want to uh, run him out of town at this point? That's, uh, that's, that's what I'm asking. And Chuck Brewer did respond. Sam, it was a reply to the person complaining about AG. All right, that's fair. And I think that's a pretty good segue into Aaron Glenn because some good news depending on who you may ask, I, I think we mo most, most, for the most part we see it as good news, was that neither Ben Johnson nor Aaron Glenn got a head coaching job in the NFL this year. And it seems like at least Ben Johnson for sure and Aaron Glenn presumably will be back. And I think we've already talked about Ben Johnson. The, uh, it was basically a celebration where, where, where it, it kind of helped ease the pain of the NFC Championship game. But we got Ben Johnson back. But we also got Aaron Glenn back, and I think the uh, responses to that are going to be a little bit more mixed because the Lions defense, even though it made lots of improvements overall throughout the year, it was not a good defense, although, although it was improved from last year. So I'll ask you first, Anson, are you excited to have Aaron Glenn back as a defensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions? Are you excited he didn't get a head coaching job and presumably he's back? Well, first, I mean, we have to address the facts. He had an underwhelming roster. Sure. Right. He did a lot with what what he was given. He's developed guys. At the same time, I think that there's a lot of guys that are miscast on this defense. He's asking players to do things that they aren't that comfortable doing, i.e. Hutchinson having his hands in the dirt. I think he'd rather line up straight up and rush. Um, but you know, you, you've got to remember that if this guy leaves, you get two third round picks for him. Yeah. Okay. So it's more than just, is this guy the right defensive coordinator for this team? I'm certainly not as excited about him staying as I was hearing about Ben Johnson, yes. but I have been very vocal last off season and heading in oh, throughout this entire year. I didn't think we were losing Ben Johnson. I think that this team is bought into something very different than you see from most franchises. It's not about money. It is about rectifying a, a completely broken franchise and doing something that they've never done before. The fact that we're even talking about and expecting a Super Bowl berth next year speaks volumes to, you know, I'm the SOL guy, but at the same time, <laughs> we're talking about a brand new Lions team and the fact that we really believe that they're going to be there. Ben Johnson is going to be a huge part of that. And I, as much as I would love to have those two third round picks, change is the great indicator of failure in the NFL. So when you bring these guys back and you give AG some real weapons, and now, like one of the guys said it in here, Tennessee, their strength is their defensive yeah. line. So we're going to get a chance to address that both at the coaching position, through the draft, and through free agency. So let's give AG some, some weapons and see how good he really is. And that's uh, always been the question with the Detroit Lions because their defense, it did show improvement from last year, and it had some moments where you could see that AG adjusted going into the Denver Broncos game. He sent more pressure with the safeties, and Ify Melifamu kind of turned into a pass-rushing demon, and Brian Branch got home a couple of times. And the defense overall was better, even though the, the guys like Cam Sutton gave up a lot of big place number one Burnt. receivers. They would Burnt. they would almost always win those games. I think the one the one that they lost in the regular season in the first couple rounds of the playoffs was the Cowboys game in which there's a lot of controversy I will say and Quite of course they uh, lost the NFC championship game as well but I'll go to you Kool-Aid because uh, I want to kind of go around the room and get the temperature are you happy that Aaron Glenn did not get a head coaching job and presumably he's back as the defensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions 
a, a lot what Anson said, man. I, I believe that this was a mix, a healthy mix of maybe some Aaron Glenn deficiencies as well as personnel deficiencies. But towards the end of that season, when he started to kind of scheme up some blitzes, change up the coverage a little bit, I actually kind of liked what was going on because I felt like they were getting a lot more out of their the, the lack of talent there. Um, I'm not as happy, you know, as we were with Ben Johnson. I, I know that Ben Johnson was probably the top head coaching candidate on the market. For him to come back to the Detroit Lions, it meant something a little bit more than Aaron Glenn coming back to the Detroit Lions. Yep. The unfinished business for Ben Johnson, in my opinion, is getting this team to a Super Bowl, but the unfinished business for Aaron Glenn is proving that he's actually a decent uh, defensive coordinator. I know that the players, there was a player poll that stated that he would be probably the, the top head coach out of the, the, you know, all of the coordinators that are not coaches that they would like to play for. And I do. I think he has those types of capabilities, that those types of, uh, you know, personality or whatnot. But as it relates to defensive coordinator, I, I am happy with consistency, especially with running it back. Your formula did get you within 20 minutes of a Super Bowl. But I am really hoping to see him take hold of this uh, defense and really take things to another level as we know Brad Holmes is going to bring in some more talent. Yeah, and I, I think you, you said it very well. And Cody Engel in the chat, who I sometimes agree with and sometimes disagree with, I think he uh, puts it very well and is goes along with how I'm thinking. I'm not a huge Glenn fan, but I'd rather have him stay than go. He's a huge locker room guy and did a ton with less. He didn't have the weapons Ben Johnson had. And that's always been the thing when it comes to this defense. Is it more personnel or scheme? And even in some points during the year, the Lions did play well defensively. They got timely stops. They got some turnovers. They held teams like the Rams in the wild card round of the playoffs to field goals instead of touchdowns and even when you look at the season as a whole because their defense when you look by the numbers was still not good but it was much improved over the year before in 2022 for example I'll just show you how much they improved they were the fifth worst in the NFL in points allowed per game at 25.1 and in 2023 they were the 10th worst at 23.2 so almost a two points per game difference when it comes to this year and last year and that doesn't even take into account I can think of three off the two Jared Goff pick sixes off the top of my head and, and the pump fumble six against the Packers and those certainly aren't the defense and Aaron Glenn's fault but where the defense really took a leap actually a leap that nobody was expecting and a hell of a leap was the run defense because in 2022 believe it or not they were the fourth worst they allowed 146.5 rushing yards per game and in 2023, they went all the way to the second best by the numbers for an entire season. They wow. allowed less than 90 rushing yards per game. And we all know that was the strength of the defense. But the fact that that was able to be such a strength that it went from being terrible the year before to elite in 2023, that's pretty staggering. And in 2022, the Lions were worst in the NFL in total yards allowed per game at 392.4. And in 2023, they were the 19th best at 336.1. And that is despite the the fact that at two positions you had people that you thought were going to be big time contributors that basically did not play the whole year. James Houston as that bookend edge rusher opposite Aiden Hutchinson. I know that nobody thought that he was going to be that every down guy, but the year before in 2022, he had eight sacks in seven games. And I think that everybody thought that he was going to be a key contributor th this year. And then you look at Emmanuel Mosley, who probably if he would have stayed healthy would have been your cornerback one. He comes back after the ACL injury, plays two plays and tears it again and is out for the whole year. You have to take that into account. You also have to take into account the way that guys like Aiden Hutchinson, Aleem McNeil, Brian Branch, Alex Anzalone, James Houston last year, Kirby Joseph, Ify Melofamu, they all made either leaps from last season to this season, had had, had, a, had amazing rookie years like Brian Branch, or improved throughout the year, and by the end of the year were able to be big-time contributors on this team, i.e. Ify Melifamu, I think, is the one that really stands out. He was out. fantastic. He was absolutely fantastic. So I think that there's a place for Aaron Glenn. I think I would like to see what he could do with more talent on the defense, which presumably the Lions could add in the offseason through another draft and free agency period. Yeah, they're in a great situation to really address the defensive the defensive side of the ball heavily at this point. And you kind of touched on it, how this team, they were good defensively this year, a lot better than they were last year. Yeah. But the last six weeks, I saw this team transform their defense. Yes, The scheming was very, very different. And I think we're going to, it's probably a good segue here shortly, but um, what I saw in that second half of that final game 
I felt like they just completely went away from, from what they had been doing. They had been so physical and they had been non-transparent in how they were bringing their rushes, whether it was coming from the secondary, uh, where they were dropping guys. I was really, really impressed. And I think if he made a huge, huge impact on this defense, the way that he played, but the scheming was very, very different as well. And I thought that played a huge part in our playoff run. I don't know where it went, though, in the second half against the 49ers. Yeah, in the, I mean, the, the second half, there were a myriad of, I mean, but we, but we always look at the offense as, as you know, the, uh, the half as well. And I get it. They gave up that uh, lucky play to Brandon Ayuk. But other than that, it was just in the first half, they were stopping Christian McCaffrey. In the second half, Christian McCaffrey went off. Yeah. In the first half, Brock Purdy wasn't having a great game. He threw a pick. And in the second half, he pretty much shredded the uh, Detroit Lions defense. So yeah. I got a great stat for yes. you. Only one time in the history of the Super Bowl era, has a team had three guys rush for over 40 yards and one touchdown in the first quarter, all right? Or the first half, excuse me. We did that with uh, J-Mo and both Monty and Gibbs. Where the hell was the run game in the second half? Well, that's, uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the big question because in the first half, another great stat is all three of those guys had more rushing yards in the first half than Christian McCaffrey did. But by the end of the game, Christian McCaffrey had more rushing yards than any of those three guys. It really was a tale of uh, two halves. And yep. we, we've touched on it during, during the week, during the show. In the first half, the Lions ran for 148 yards and three touchdowns in the BNL second half. BNL in the first half. Yes, and in the second half, they rushed for only 34. SOL in the second half. I mean... I know a lot of people aren't going to like that, but that was a very SOL second half. And if you, I don't think that this is SOL, this, no. this team, but at the same time, that was a biblically bad second half. But see, half. that's the problem, Yeah, is these guys will break your effing heart, yeah. you know? And it does. It, it, it smells, tastes, looks completely different. And we have real aspirations and expectations of a Super Bowl bid next year, but, oh, man... Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, unfortunately a 27-0 run given up. That's uh, that's so hard. That's not that doesn't happen. It, yep. it just took so many things going wrong. And yeah, the running game being abandoned, like. On the first drive, I know David Montgomery had some had some nice carries. I think he had three for 18 on that drive. But then again, on that third and four, leading into that fourth and two, they decided to give the ball to St. Brown. Yeah. And of course, St. Brown is a hell of a weapon yeah. as, a, as a pass catcher. But you had David Montgomery back there, who on that drive had been averaging six yards per carry. You had Jameer Gibbs as an option. This was before he fumbled, by the way, who had picked up a third and 12 previously in the game and had a 15-yard touchdown. So that was, that, that was a big one. The second drive, obviously, the first play was a run to Jameer Gibbs in which he fumbled and then the third drive there was that where they went three and out it was one run and then two passes to Laporta and Reynolds Laporta actually kind of had himself a drop as well but the Reynolds one was definitely the more egregious one but yeah it, when, when you look at this it was just a total team failure they just controlled the tempo so well in the first yeah. half by utilizing the run game I don't even remember seeing play action in the second half much at yeah. all and to just do that, the way that they, I mean, the text messages and phone conversations I had during halftime on my drive here compared to what we were discussing after the game, I'm telling you, there were so many 75-year-old Detroit Lions fans that were, I told you, oh, I told no. you, oh, and no. that's not what we wanted, man. I mean, I didn't, I, I don't think I was right. I don't. I never wanted to say that that it, that this team is in that old stage, because they are. They are a brand new Lions organization. But at the same time, when you end a season, the way that you historically have played for the last seventy-five years, it's it's hard to to fully say they're they're here. They're here for good. That old stuff is behind us because that old stuff was fully on display in the second half of the NFC Championship. That's what's crazy, though, is the second half. Yeah, it was it was complete. It was a choke job. It was a meltdown. It was all of that. But in the first half, that the way that the Lions played in that first half, that was the best I've seen any football team play all year, any NFL <laughs> team play all year. And then it was against just one of the best, man. We were just the dominating. They physically beat the piss out of them. Yeah, it was a, it was complete and utter domination. And but unfortunately, the second half wasn't wasn't great at all. And uh, now we're now we have people talking SOL, which we never wanted. And and Anson, I know you would agree with me when I make that statement. This statement, 
if before the season you were guaranteed a division title, 12 wins, two playoff wins, including one over the Matthew Stafford-led Rams, every single one of us would have taken that result in a heartbeat. All day long. But unfortunately, you also didn't take into account having a 17-point halftime lead in the NFC Championship game. So overall, very, very successful season. But at the same time, it, w it was disappointing. And one of the reasons that the Lions were successful to me was... Aaron Glenn making those adjustments later into the year. And overall, I think being a net positive for this team, but I still think he needs to show don't break, but an actual good defense. That's, but you know, oh, go ahead. I don't know what I was going to say. That's what makes me yeah. optimistic yeah. about the hiring of Terrell Williams uh, coming to this Lions defense. Man, he had a pretty, a pretty nice, uh, he did a really nice job with the Titans underneath Vrabel. I thought that that staff was a, a power staff to be able to go and take somebody from that culture and add it to Aaron Glenn's staff. You know what? I, I thought he did well for the talent that he had on this team uh, last season with the Detroit Lions. Improvements across the board, despite the fact that they dealt with major injuries to their defense, uh, defensive line and the defensive backfield. The only unit that seemed to be kind of intact the way that they had planned it were the linebackers. Everything else kind of on the outside of those things is where they absolutely had to figure out, okay, where do we go from here? And, you know, there's there's so many questions across the board, especially with Aiden Hutchinson. Does he need more help? Did he take a step back as it relates to his ability to get the quarterback on the ground and whatnot? I believe that the Detroit Lions, starting with Brad Holmes, Sheila, and Dan Campbell, they've shown that they're not afraid to go out there and make the necessary decisions and the necessary changes. And I believe that if Aaron Glenn is still here, it's because those decision makers, those people at the top, they still believe in what he's bringing to the table, both as a motivator, both as a coach to be able to coach guys up, both as a scheme and a playmaker and things of that nature, putting his guys in position to make plays. Because we saw a lot of opportunistic plays last year, a lot of schemes that towards the end of the game where a cornerback might have been getting burnt all of a sudden, these guys are turning in game-ending interceptions, like against the Vikings and and and, and against uh, you know Baker to be able to end that game with an interception and whatnot. Those are the types of things that I did see. I'm not saying that I think he's going to go in next year and be this world beater on defense. I hope he is, but I do have to trust what Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell are seeing out there, and to be able to bring him more support, both in the coaching ranks as well as talent. I think it's Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell more or less admitting that they need to do just as much more as we think Aaron Glenn needs to do as well. And it makes me it makes me optimistic going into next season. Oh yeah, and and that's uh, and that's the thing because the Lions with as currently constructed, I don't think they're capable of having a I don't want to say a good defense, but one that is a championship level defense. And I get it, you don't necessarily have to have a championship level defense if you have an offense as good as the Lions, but they do need to add more players. And obviously guys like Aiden Hutchinson and Brian Branch and Jack Campbell and Kirby Joseph presumably will get better. You would probably- But, but yeah. Flannel, how many, how many of our defenders would you say would be sure starters on another team? I mean, I, you got Hutchinson. Yes. I think Branch at this point. Yes. You know, maybe Campbell next year. But there's not another dude on that defense. I mean, Kirby Joseph is not a starting safety in the NFL. He's starting for us, and he's been solid. But that guy should be, he should be one of your bench pieces. He should be your depth piece. If you're going to be a playoff team, Kirby Joseph is not your starting safety. And you look up and down that, that defensive roster, there's four or five guys at best that you'd say, yes, he's going to start on the majority of football teams. We have a lot of guys that they have picked up and developed and gotten way more out of. So if you give AG some young guys like he did with Campbell and, and, and some of these other guys, Branch that they drafted, and then you get a, a few more fill-ins that aren't hurt all season long and getting burnt like Sutton, um, I think that this defense could really take a whole new life. Like you went through those stats. This was the second best run defense in the NFL. That's crazy. That is crazy. So to think that if you add in a few other pieces that you can't take that jump in the passing game as well defensively, I, I, I like what, where these guys are headed, especially with the cap space in our situation. Yeah. Our offense, set it and forget it. We need a little offensive line help. I think I'd love to see a third or fourth round uh, stab at a wide receiver because this is just a fantastic class. You know, give me an Adane Mitchell or a, or a Xavier Leggett or something. Oh, yeah. But we don't have to address the offense very much. The defense can get so much of our focus and so much of our capital. And you give AG that, man. And, and I, I'm excited to see what he does. Because that's, that's my question to people is, 
to those that believe AG's time should be up, that he's on borrowed time right now, what in his schemes over like the last, what, six or seven games and the playoffs would you have changed given the circumstance of their personnel? Probably nothing. I think w what he needed to change was just rushing four at that point because there was a long stretch of time where the Lions weren't getting a ton of pressure. And even though, as we've always said, when they made that adjustment, when they sent more blitzes, it left the corners more vulnerable to getting burnt one on one by some of the best receivers in the NFL. But the Lions <laughs> won all of those games and they made the stops when they needed to. They made the uh, the the turn. They created the turnovers when they needed to. They held teams to field goals when they needed to. Hell, in the second in the early second half against the Buccaneers, they got some actual stops, including a three and out when they needed to. So this defense, it was enough for the Lions to get as far as they did this year. But I agree for the most part that the Lions don't have the talent of what of what what is a good defense, but people are kind of upset with you for your a Kirby Joseph take. Anson. I, I'm a Kirby <laughs> Joseph fan, guys. I, I really like him, but he's a depth piece on a championship team. He's not your starting safety. I don't necessarily hate that on a championship team. Obviously, Kirby Joseph can start for a lot of teams in the NFL, but a lot of teams aren't championships teams. There's a lot of five five win teams, six win teams out, out there, and. I like Kirby as well. I respect the fact that each of his first couple seasons, he each of his first two seasons, he's led the Lions in interceptions both years. But as we all know, secondary play isn't all about interceptions because you're also going to get burned from time to time, be out of position. And Kirby, I mean, I don't. I'm not. I'm not going to kill you on that. Kirby's not somebody that I die on the hill for. I'll yeah. probably like like you said, who's who would be starters on other teams right now? Hutch, Ali.